Someone was recently inquiring on the Photo.net forums as to how the shutter operated on the Polaroid Model 800 uh, land camera. This is one of the roll film series Polaroid cameras. Um, and to be honest, I didn't know the answer. However, I did have a happen to have a Polaroid Model 800 land camera in some shape of disrepair. The bells were punctured. Uh, and the rangefinder housing was cracked, so I figured as long as I had the opportunity, why not uh, open it up and see how it functioned. Now, this same series of shutters was used on the Polaroids model 95, 95A, 95B, 150, 160, 700, and 800 cameras. Um, with the caveat that the original Polaroid model 95, no suffix... Um, had shutter speeds from one eighth of a second to one sixtieth of a second instead of the one, tw one twelfth of a second to one one hundredth of a second that the later model cameras, the 95A, 95B, 150, 160, 700, 800 had. So this shutter, which I pulled off an 800, um, is going to be of the later design. If you open up a Polaroid model 95 shutter, it should be this very similar internally. Um, but there may be some small dimensional differences. Now, if you actually open up the shutter, um, this is what you're going to find in the back here. Um, accessing the shutter internals is not too complicated in an operation. Um, there are four Phillips head screws that hold the bellows onto the rear lens board here. Uh, and then there are three flat head screws here, here, and here. Um, that are going to allow you, if you take those out, to remove this back panel which contains the rear lens element off of the shutter. Now I will say the shutter design on these cameras is very unique. It's not a design I've really seen anywhere else. Um, basically the operations that you can perform on the front are limited to EV stops. So you can rotate through EVs 10 through 17 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, EVs 10 through 17. Um, and that's the limit of how much you can adjust exposure. And you also have the option for instantaneous or bulb exposures if you want to do time exposures. Um, but that's the limit of what you, controls you have on the shutter. The button here being used once depressed will activate the shutter either in bulb or time mode. So if we go ahead and look at this, what you're going to see is there is a large drum. Um, and what that's doing is that's geared to the EV control wheel. And by rotating the EV control wheel, you're going to notice that it's rotating between these stops here up to the largest stop, which is simply a cutout in the wheel, allow, allowing the lens to be used at its full aperture. When the lever here is depressed, what it's actually doing is this: there is a one shutter blade here, and it is made of steel and it has a clockwork spring here that returns it to its original position. And there's a magnet here that retains it in the closed position when it is after it has been fired. And so what happens when you depress this lever is that you'll find that there is a spring here and by pushing this lever down you are tensioning that spring and what that's doing is it's pulling on this lever here. That lever being retained by this plate here. So what's happening, and I'm going to hold the trip down here, is that when you fully depress the lever, it's going to go ahead and tension this spring, which is going to put force on this lever, which is then retained by this sear here. And so what happens when you get to the bottom of travel, I'm holding it down, but you see that this brass cog here would normally be pushed up and smack the sear, 
releasing this trip and that trip is going to be pulled by the spring and hit this plate here, discharging it from the magnet. Now I've gone ahead and zoomed in on the mechanism here. And you can see as I push the shutter lever down, what's happening is that this bar here is pivoting, being retained by this bar here. As a result, the tension of the spring is being taken up until it gets to the top point at which point right here it's going to stop so I'm going to hold this here again and you can see once it gets to the top it's in a position where the spring is at full tension and it's pulling on that bar there right against if I can move around here and hold this down with my thumb without trying to get in the way too much right there this protruding tab right here is right in an optimal position to where when this sear here is released the spring tension will cause this bar to be pulled to the side to the right here and that's going to strike this tab on the only shutter blade in here and that's going to cause it to become detached from the magnet here and it's going to get yanked over uncapping the shutter. Now normally the tab on the sear here is hit by this brass bar here when the shutter lever reaches the end of its travel. So if I hold it and just give it a little tap it'll release tripping the shutter. Now you will note, if you can see it on there, if I can get this up in a way that the camera can see it, that there is a sheet metal tab right here underneath the brass bar. And there is also an insulated contact here. Um, this goes down through a wire to the, um, on the 800, that'll go to the hot shoe on the body of the camera although on the earlier cameras the 95 series and 700 there would be an ASA style bayonet fitting for a flash there and so what's happening here is this is how the M-Sync flash is achieved once as soon as this brass block is released this sheet metal tab can go up from the body of the shutter and touch this insulated post here grounding it out so that's going to complete the circuit and that's going to happen as soon as the brass bar is released so it's going to happen actually a few milliseconds before the sear is tripped and the shutter begins to move and that's what's going to give you your delay for your bulb flash now there is a bulb function on the camera and so when the switch is set to the bulb function, what that's doing is this um, ovular plate here is moved. And you can see that there is a sheet metal tab right here, if I can get the camera to focus on it, right here. that a protrusion on that ovular metal piece is clicking into. And so what's happening when it's in bulb is that there is a sheet metal tab right here. And when the shutter is fired, that sheet metal tab is going to go ahead and retain this tab on the one shutter leaf blade until the shutter lever is released at which point that springs uh, tab will release and drop the shutter blade closed again. 
Now you may be asking yourself how exactly shutter speed is regulated on this series of shutters because when you pull down the lever here this spring is going to cause this shutter leaf to be hit the same velocity every time. Um, so it's not actually going to change the velocity at which the shutter blade is moving. Um, so what you're going to notice is that there are actually five spring steel stops up here in the shutter. There's actually one here. This one isn't actually a function of the shutter. That's just to provide click stops um, for the EV wheel. So you've actually only got four stops here and those are going to give you your four different shutter speeds. One twelfth of the second, one twenty-fifth, one fiftieth, and one one hundredth. And so what you will notice is that the EV wheel here, the inner circumference of it, is not round. And as I rotate through, little tabs on these stops are going to get closer to the inner part of the wheel as I click through the different EV settings. So, on the fastest shutter speed, that is one one hundredth of a second, when this gets hit, what it's going to do is travel all the way up here until it reaches the stop here. And at that point it will stop and this spring here will cause it to return to its initial position. If I go ahead and give the EV wheel a turn, this stop will move out of the way and this one will be moved into position. And so the shutter will open further and thus giving a larger delay before it returns to its initial position. So that would be the 1 50th of a second. And then the same would be true here as that one moves out of the way, this one would be moved into position. And so the shutter blade, I apologize, I use my finger here, is going to come all the way up here before it returns to the initial position. Um, that would be 1 25th of a second. If I turn it all the way back, the shutter is now going to have to make almost a full 360 and hit the final stop down here before it returns to its initial position. And so in that way it's actually a variable degrees of travel of the single shutter blade that causes the different timing of the shutter. Now there is also a manual adjustment thumb screw, or not thumb screw, I apologize, it's, a, it's just a flat head screw. And by doing that you can adjust the amount of tension on the mainspring here, which will allow you to fine tune the shutter speed based on the amount of initial kick that the shutter blade receives. Now there is also an electronic synchronization that is built into these Polaroid shutters and that is just via a bi-pin connection on the top here. And what you'll see is that the one pin just goes into the body and then the other pin, the exposed pin here, is wired by an insulated connector down and to the very first of the shutter stops. So what that means is that when the shutter is in the fastest position, that stop will come into play and when the shutter blade hits it, it will be grounded and create the co connection for the electronic flash. This also means that the electronic flash synchronization will only operate at the fastest shutter speed, the 1 100th of a second. Now I've reoriented this shutter because I'm trying to point out the most common fault I've seen with these and that is when the button, the shutter button here is pushed down that the shutter will tension but it won't actually trip or it will trip in a delayed fashion as seen there. And what I believe causes this, um, and you'll note sometimes this only occurs with the shutter held a certain way. This one tends to function normally when held horizontally, but when put in a vertical position, it will either trip in a delayed fashion or not trip at all. And what I believe the cause of this is, is that this main block here is tensioned by a spring here. And if this becomes dirty, this axis here, or if the spring loses tension, 
it won't have the necessary force to overcome the the trip on the shutter lever here. So my recommendation is if the, your shutter is doing that, or it's not tripping reliably, or not tripping in all orientations, that you go ahead and lubricate and if necessary remove this spring here and just bend it a little bit in order to get a little more tension and that should resolve the issue. So hopefully this has helped some folks un better understand this uh, rather interesting and unusual Polaroid shutter. Um, I'm not familiar with any other design that uses magnets and this kind of rotating single shutter leaf here in order to achieve that kind of design other than um, I do believe some of the later um, Polaroid electronic shutters on the pack film cameras have an electromagnet and similar system. Um, but it's definitely unique. So hopefully this was helpful to some folks.